Since it's now 2021, that means that the global panda express is officially over. Oh, wait, I was just kidding. I meant the global pandemic is officially over. They might be thinking, how is that possible? Well, two weeks ago, I cured coronavirus by filling a bottle rocket with hand sanitizer, and I sent it into the atmosphere. And for the past two weeks, the hand sanitizer has been spraying into the air, and people all around the world have been breathing in my vaccine air. Now, to test my theory, I decided today to see if I can find any pesky COVID germs lying around. So, I went to the gas station and i licked the debit keypad and then i licked my fingers after typing in my pin which is one two three four and then after that i went to panda express and i enjoyed some yummy shrimp but when i was driving home i felt the covid 21 germs from licking the gas station keypad bubbling in my stomach and i went home and i fell to my bed and i started coughing when all of a sudden i coughed up a piece of lego but i kept coughing and eventually i had enough lego pieces of a little lego house so maybe covid 21 isn't that bad Today I was on a romantic date with my non-existent girlfriend at the park. When I saw someone had left a perfectly good laptop on the ground, so I walked over and picked it up and I tried pressing some keys and turning it on, but it was dead. So I brought the laptop home so I could give it some juice and that's when the screen turned on and there was this game called Isles of Glory and I was like, okay, how do I play? And then I asked for my location and I thought, ah, all right. But just that very second, my doorbell rang and when I checked the door, I got this box from No Frills and when I opened it, it was full of bananas and wires and I was like, wait a minute, is this how I play the game? So I went over to my computer and I stabbed the wires into the bananas and then put the wired bananas into my computer. And I can't even make this up. It literally worked with the electrical signals of my hand. And for the next 48 hours, I was playing this game nonstop, squeezing these bananas. Because it turns out you can win up to 10 million PC optimum points to redeem for all sorts of things. And I got so excited that at one point I squeezed the banana too hard. And anyways, I squirted banana all over my computer, but you can go play yourself and win points, but only for a limited time. Ow. Do your knees pop? Try Doodoo Prill and live a better tomorrow today. I mean, okay. Side effects include death, bleeding. Uh, wait, uh, what? <laughs> joint pain, knee popping. I thought the whole point is so my knees don't crack. What? Knee pain, knee discomfort. You may feel the uncontrollable <gasps> urge to go into your fridge and then grab a lemon and get in your car and drive over to Walmart and look for an innocent elderly person and throw the lemon at their head. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Do not drive while on doo-doo pro. But it just made me drop. Uh-uh, uh-uh. I'm walking home then. I'm walking Blindness may occur at any time. Some patients forget English and only speak Spanish. Esto es ridículo. Por qué? In 90% of cases, your knees will fall off. However, popping is guaranteed to stop at this stage. Que mierda! So I have a chunk of dry ice from buying human organs off the black market, but I was thinking, how do you even get rid of dry ice? Like, it doesn't melt, because it's literally frozen air, and it repels water, which means it's homophobic- Oh wait, I mean hydrophobic? Anyways, I'm clinically stupid, so I broke a piece in half and plopped it in my toilet to see what would happen. And I was making these fun little bubbles, so I filled the bathtub and grabbed the rest of it and threw it in some water to see what would happen. And anyways, that was a mistake, because it filled the whole shower up with gases, and I remembered it's not frozen air, it's frozen CO2, and I was getting lightheaded, and I wasn't trying and die. So I took the piece out and I brought it to the sink and I jammed it down the drain as best as I could so it would go away. And then I took a deep breath of relief until I looked down to see I was standing in a puddle of water and boom, my pipes exploded. There was water spraying me everywhere in the face. It got everywhere. Anyways, uh, I may have caused a catastrophic water main failure in my whole neighborhood and flooded 102 buildings. So, um, I don't think the vegan chicken nuggets were worth it. This morning when I woke up, I reached over to my light to turn it on and it didn't. At first I thought the bulb died because it's $4 from Ikea, but then I looked at my iPad and it didn't charge overnight. And I realized I don't have any power. So I grabbed four blankets and wrapped myself up to conserve heat. Even though I accidentally left two candles burning overnight. Oops. Uh. I was still cold. So I decided to go upstairs and make myself a hot beverage to stay warm. And I can make coffee, but that's literally bean water. Uh. Or I can make matcha, which is just Shrek's ashes. So I ended up grabbing the matcha because I hate coffee. And I went to grab a cup, but they were all freaking dirty and gross. So I boiled some water in my kettle, which apparently <laughs> Americans don't have. Like, let me know if you have a tea kettle or if that's just a British thing. Love. Anyways. Anyways, I poured some matcha and then the water after it. And then I went to grab the cup and I burned my hand on the glass, which was really fun. And I didn't have any cream because the fridge was warm from the electricity being out. So I took my blankets off and I gave it a test. And mama, let me tell you, it tasted like if dirt had a butthole. I ended up spitting it out. And then I poured the rest out on the concrete. But the water had rehydrated Shrek's ashes and he came back to life. And have you ever noticed how almost every label has these weird dots and color codes? These are on everything from pudding boxes to taco seasoning packets. They're on granola bar boxes and they're even on chocolate chip bags. Even my delicious cottage cheese has it too. I thought to myself, what do they mean? So I've spent the past month researching it, trying to crack the code. My first thoughts were that it had to do with the color. So I wrote down two codes from two packages down. But then my marker died, so I killed it. 
Then I colored in the shapes to match the secret code, but I didn't find anything, so I ripped it up. That's when I realized it's not a color puzzle, it's a crossword puzzle. The code always appears in either four or six circles or squares. So I wrote it out again and I knew exactly what filled the spaces this time. Debbie Ryan. If you don't believe me, here is her with pistachio pudding, has the code. Here's chocolate chip cookies on her snap story. Chocolate chips have the code. And finally, here's her with a granola bar. The granola bar has the code. Why would she do this? What if she's trying to brainwash all of us by placing these subtle codes so she can take over our brains and- uh, ah! Today, I was sick of feeling lazy, so I went on the treadmill, walked three steps, and then got off. But as I was folding it up, my anemia hit, and I couldn't hold the treadmill anymore, and it collapsed on me. When I woke up, my arm was trapped underneath the metal, and I couldn't get out. My dog is too stupid to help me, and I couldn't even call for help because my phone was just out of reach, and I turned Siri off because last time I used her, well... Hey, Siri, call Wendy's. Killing Wendy. No, 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 no! The only thing within reach was a minion figurine and a fork with a grape on it. First I ate the grape because like, mmm, grapes are delicious. But then it hit me what needed to be done. I put the minion in my mouth so that I wouldn't scream. Then I grabbed the plastic fork and I took my arm up. Wait, does that say emergency release latch? As in like, I did I did not have to sever my, my arm. I did not need to cut off my arm. I was at Staples, because I needed some staples so I could staple a staple into my staple box so staples wouldn't fall out anymore. But staples was sold out of all the staples, and I asked a staples employee named April if they had any more staples, and she said that I could order some more staples from Naples. But this staples had no staples, so I was gonna leave with no staples, but my phone was dying, so I needed a cable. So I walked past April and went to the cables, but the cables were too much, so I just bought a bagel. And now I'm at home at my table with my bagels and no staples or cables, because April from Staples wanted me to choke, and as I bit my bagel, it had mold, and the bagel was fatal, and I fell off the table, and my last thoughts were of my lover named Mabel when we would sit by the stable and pour maple all over our bagels. And as I took my last breath on the floor, I saw a staple. My friend's dog looked like a dust bunny. So we took him to the groomers and got him shaved. And now he looks like a little puffy cloud and he's so cute, even though he kind of looks like a human in a dog suit, like that one meme of that dog. Anyways, when we got home, we were cuddling, but then I noticed that he was digging for something in the beanbag chair. And I was like so confused. Like, was he trying to make bread? But then I noticed there was smoke coming from the beanbag chair seams. At first, I thought I tipped over one of the hundreds of unattended candles I have lit at all times. But the chair like wasn't warm or anything. So I unzipped it more and I was engulfed in a cloud of smoke and I blacked out. When I woke up, it was like I had gone through a pool portal and I was in some alternate reality where terrible world events such as Dance Monkey was never released and the bat with COVID-19 ran into a glass window. I was loving this new world until I walked into my Minecraft themed bedroom and realized in this universe Minecraft doesn't exist. I fell to my knees and screamed until I woke up next to the beanbag and I looked inside to realize that the smoke was actually just fungal spores from a moldy chicken nugget. Oh my god it's closed. Uh, hey Siri call Wendy's. Killing Wendy. No 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 no. Um, I said cancel. Would you like to cancel? Yes, yes. Canceling your passport and birth certificate. What? No! How do you even have permission to do that? Permission to leak your feed pics? My feet? What? Sending feed pics to everyone in your contacts. Ah! How are you even doing this? This is illegal. Something illegal is happening? Alerting the FBI. Yeah, something illegal is happening. You just blew up that Wendy's. Okay, should I send this to the FBI? I just blew up a Wendy's. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Did you say absolutely? Message sent. Would you like to use your pics from the mugshot trend for when you go to prison? No! no. Kidnap Queen Elizabeth? No! Not Queen Elizabeth! What? Every morning, I check the comments on my TikToks, and people always ask if I'm crazy or on the devil's salad. Because apparently I act a little bit crazy in my videos. <laughs> So, I thought I'd take you on a tour into my mind and how I make my TikToks. When I wake up, I eat expired rotten garbage from my neighbor's trash bin, and after a few hours, I start seeing and hearing things. And that's when I get to work. I take my iPad and go down into my basement where there's no light and sounds, and I start writing down a fun little story. And then I record the voiceover. I was applying a ton of lotion on my hands because they were as dry as my cat's ashes, and I also wanted my hands to be soft. But then I get frustrated for stuttering so much that I punish myself by watching a full Gabby Hanna podcast episode. Guys. Then I go film it and send it off to my editor named Georgie, who I pay five thousand dollars per tiktok to edit them just kidding the editor's me georgie's gone <laughs> i hate him <sighs> okay surprise surprise this made no sense but i did make an actual video showing the entire process of how i make my tiktok so if you want to watch that the link to the youtube videos in my bio remember on new year's eve when we were all excited for 2020 to start and then world war ii almost started and we were like okay that's the worst thing that's gonna happen this year and then australia walked in and said you know what i am gonna light on fire
And then immediately after that, we lost Kobe. And we're like, okay, that's enough for this year. But it wasn't because then someone coughed. And the next thing you know, six million people were coughing. And then anything that ever brought anyone joy was canceled. And then after that, we were like, okay, this is too much. I would like to go to bed for the rest of the year. And then boom, murder hornets arrive in North America. Oh, what's that? That's just NASA discovering alternate universes that apparently exist now. And that thing in the sky. Oh yeah, that's an asteroid that almost wiped out humanity. Which at this point wouldn't be a bad thing. Oh yeah, the government also confirmed that they found UFOs, you know, as a little treat. And the year isn't even done yet. It's literally June. Like, what's gonna happen now? <laughs> if you want to see my accurate prediction of what's gonna happen the rest of the year, the link to the YouTube video is in my bio. I was enjoying some fresh strawberries when my doorbell rang. I wasn't expecting anyone, but I went and answered the door anyways. No one was there, but whoever rang the doorbell had left an egg? It was covered in blue speckles and it was warm? But I decided right then and there, I'm gonna care for this egg until it hatches and be a bird dad. I made a little house for it by grabbing a box and putting grass in it. Then I set up a heat lamp so the egg root would be nice and toasty. But I was getting bored of waiting for him to hatch, so I decided to take him on a walk. Well, it was more of a roll. I taught Eggbert how to skate and showed him to my dog, but then she tried to eat him. And I was like, after a week, my son started to get an attitude. He would just roll away from me when I was talking to him and then go play Fortnite all day. But then one day we started arguing because the place was a chicken coop. And I got so mad, I stormed off. I started feel bad so i went to go say sorry but he was gone i ran outside and i looked everywhere for him i checked the patio i went and looked in the garden i was starting to freak out when <laughs> egbert <laughs> So I think I have a stalker and it's starting to freak me out. It started a month ago when I'd accidentally showed my address on my story. I deleted it immediately, but a few days later, my doorbell rang in the middle of the night. Then a week later, I found a Nintendo DS outside my house that said, hello, Benjamin. And then a week after that, I found one inside my bathroom while I was showering. And it said, see you soon. But first of all, I don't even know where he's getting all these Nintendo DSs from. Like, they don't even make those mama jamas anymore. Personally, if I was invading someone's privacy, I'd use sticky notes or something. Anyways, I decided to change my front door code to a really secret number. One, two, three, four. But then the next day, I heard the door unlock, and then someone came downstairs, and they were wearing a black hoodie and black jeans, and I thought they were gonna kidnap me, but I welcome the stalker. I haven't had a human interest in me in months, so I asked them to come cuddle with me. But they looked so caught off guard when I asked them to come under the blankets. And then I guess I out-creeped the creep when I tried to lick his toes. And that's when he ran away. My stalker doesn't even want me, bruh. I was enjoying some banana on the cob when I realized lockdown is over here. So I got in the car, hit the gas, and drove to the closest thrift store, and I went thrifting. When I walked in the thrift store, I passed by the toy aisle, and there was a doll on the bottom shelf playing this really creepy song. And I know some dolls are cursed, but it's only $2, and the demon can keep me company, so I bought Frick, it. My mask is falling. Anyways, I brought it home, but when I looked at it again, I noticed there was a note attached to the bottom that read, Make a wish or you and I thought, <laughs> that's Pennywise's line. This doll's gonna get sued for copying the movie It before it possesses me. But I do be scared of demons, though. So I wished for the first thing that I could think of, which was an air fryer. Then after making my wish, I went to bed. I woke up the next morning to the birds chirping the sunshine and... Ah! 300 pound air fryer on my chest, crushing me to the point where I couldn't breathe. I finally got it off and thought, you know what, Mr. Demon? Thank you for the air fryer. It's not exactly how Amazon would have delivered it, but I like your vision. Then I realized I have another wish left. I was thinking, what do I want more of? <gasps> some fire shoes. So I said, I want some fire. You want fire? <laughs> no, no, no. I was standing in the burnt rubble where my house used to be because two weeks ago I blew up my little TikTok candle, but I didn't blow it up hard enough. And it was right next to a roll of paper towel. And I went into the bathroom, but I had a gut feeling it wasn't out. So I went back in and sure enough, I had to blow it out again. After that, I made a struggle meal out of the nasty cereal from the Lucky Charms and some Tic Tacs to really channel the flavor of my white heritage. And I took the pan off the burner, which was very close to a box of matches. And I was pouring it in a bowl as I was about to eat it when I realized I left the burner on. So I quickly ran over to the stove to turn it off and I went back to my food, but I can't eat unless I'm watching something. So I turn on She-Ra, but like my freaking laptop is about to die. So I plug it into my extension cable that also has every other thing that I was plugged into it. And I realized that's probably not safe. So I just plugged it into the wall. And while I was watching my show, I got distracted. So I posted on my story that astrology isn't real because I felt like starting drama. And instantly I had 37 curses placed on me. All the plates in my kitchen started floating. And then I went outside and my house got smited by lightning. So uh, if anyone has a really nice and comfy cardboard box that I can sleep in, let me know. <laughs> I haven't been posting on TikTok because I got a stalker that's been DMing me saying he's gonna come to my house and that he knows my address. And I didn't know what to do, so I packed my bags and I ran away to Florida to try and hide. When I finally got there, I went to the pool to relax when I saw someone staring at me from a distance covered in like smoke or something. I was kind of scared, but I followed them out of the pool and I barely got out because I have no upper body strength. <clears throat> anyways, I followed his footsteps to the beach and they led me to this fenced off area, but I went in anyways and I followed the trail of smoke coming from him, which brought me to this weird abandoned building which had a really strong 
strong smell of like skunk or something coming from it. I was still curious, so I stuck inside and it was completely dark. So I turned on my flash and there was Jacob Sartorius! I screamed out, what do you want from me? And that's when he asked if I wanted to do some lettuce with him. And you know what I said? Yes! And we made a delicious salad together. Just me and Jacob Sartorius, two dudes tossing salad in the kitchen. I'm a Canadian and this is my Canadian passport. And this is my Canadian passport picture. Uh, and for some reason, I'm in the freaking United States during the season finale of America. Because I'm stupid and I just really wanted some good American fast food. Anyways, I was trying to escape before it becomes the newest Purge movie. So I packed up my JoJo Siwa poster, my Rainy Rodriguez shrine, and my favorite toilet seat. And I left my room for the very last time. And walked over to the bus station to go back to Canada. And as I was sitting on that bus, I remembered I forgot my passport on my desk while filming this TikTok. So I freaked out and I got off the bus and I ran back to my place faster than Zoe Laverne is running from the federal authorities. And once I grabbed it, I then called an Uber back to Canada and it was $4,000, but I booked it since I missed the bus. Anyways, the Uber arrived, so I went downstairs and I got in and the guy was chill until he turned to me and said, is it just you? And I said, why? And he said, I ain't never seen two pretty best no! friends. Two weeks ago, I saw a $35 inflatable frog costume and I bought it because I'm sick of wearing a mask and a frog costume covers everything. I was waiting for it to arrive today while seeing if banana peels would stick to my ceiling when the doorbell rang. I ran downstairs and saw that the suit finally came. First, I got my head stuck, but then I managed to get it on and I was so happy, but I couldn't reach behind me. So I asked my friend to zip me up and- oh my gosh, you're too fat for it. Anyways, I finally had it on at least, so I was excited to hit the streets. I was walking around in the suit, talking to some friendly citizens and dancing whenever I crossed the street. When I saw people lined up for something. What's this lineup for? Is this for ice cream? Ice cream. But the ice cream place didn't have any samples, so I kept freaking walking. Then I stared in the window of some shops trying to make eye contact with people until they got freaked out. And then I dropped some frog puns. What do frogs drink? Coca cola But that's when I made a grave yeah. mistake. I was busting down a Nicki Minaj and throwing it back on a Tesla that was parked. When? There's a person sitting in it. <laughs> if you want to see what happened to me, the link to the YouTube video is in my bio. Today was my first day working at Starbucks, and I was making a garbage water frappuccino. Until I realized, this isn't a Starbucks, everything is fake. I'm in a fake Starbucks in Ikea. I ran as fast as I could to escape the fake Starbucks, and when I finally got out, I realized, I still don't have a job. How am I going to get enough money to buy a Shrek cardboard cutout? So, I made a resume, even though I have zero qualifications. I got in my car and drove to the haircut store, but they wouldn't hire me because they saw me give myself a bad quarantine haircut. So then I drove over to the grocery store, and then I was looking for the manager until some dude caught to my face. I wiped the diseases off my face and then ran to my car to apply hand sanitizer. But I didn't realize I had a cut on my finger. It burned so bad that I passed out, but I was still driving my car and it rolled off by itself. When I woke up, I had no clue where I was. And my car was out of gas. I got out and realized I was in the middle of nowhere. But then I remembered, I can just check my GPS and ah, how did I end up in North Korea? <laughs> Remember on Vine when people would get injured and then go viral for no reason? Well, I'm gonna be the first person on TikTok. So that put me in a coma for about 50 years. And the first thing I did when I woke up was check if the TikTok of me getting hit by a car went viral. But I found out the TikTok was no more. It was replaced by Vine 2000. Anyways, I was feeling hungry and super skinny after not eating for five decades. So I checked what was in the fridge. There was some pizza with mold on it, but mold just adds extra flavor. So I ate it. After my mold meal, I decided to wander around the empty wasteland. I was skating around, but then started to feel lonely because humans went extinct from COVID-70. But then I realized this is the future. I'm sure they have time travel. I said, hey Siri, do you have time travel? And she was like, yes, yeah, stupid, it's the future. What date do you want to go to? And I decided to go to a date that would change history. November 13th. I teleported into a Walmart and went to go look for the Gummy Bear album. I looked on every shelf, but I was a year too early. So today was April Fools and I got a doorbell notification, which I thought was strange because I'm not expecting any packages. And when I checked it, I saw a box sitting outside my house. I was like, what the heck is a baguette? That sounds like the opposite of a, you know what I'm talking about. Anyways, I picked it up and brought it inside and realized it makes vegetable pasta. And I was so excited. So I opened it up, but there was no baguette. There was just my hair. And I started panicking because I was like, how did they get my human hair? And that's when I realized that a month ago I cut my own hair and put it online as a real Michael Jackson wig and sold it to someone for $5,000. But they probably got my address from the return address on the package. Anyways, I looked in the hair and found a note saying I need to lock my door because- Since Trump got banned off of every social media platform, I actually discovered the last way that he's been able to whine to his little Trump stands since he can't be on Twitter anymore. And you're probably wondering, what is it? Well, last January, my number got leaked online and someone took my number and gave it to the Trump campaign. So they've been sending me nonstop texts, emails, and calling me like once a week. Oh, to support Donald Trump. And whenever they call me, I, um... Ah! 
politely decline. Anyway, since he's been banned, it's been real quiet. Until one day, I was drinking Red Bull out of my frog mug on the balcony when a piece of paper hit me in the head from the sky and I saw a carrier pigeon flying away. Anyways, I looked at the note and it was a note from Trump himself saying he's bored and losing his job and needs $50. <laughs> you know what I did? I went looking for the perfect pigeon to send back to the president of the United States and I found a strong young pigeon with just a dash of rabies. I showed it a picture of Trump, pointed it in the direction of the White House and I said, fly, baby, fly.